This over here is the RTX 3050. Now graphics card prices are getting down and they're getting more in stock. And now this RTX 3050 looks like the most budget friendly in you know the market so the question is you as a creator is it worth buying and how does it compare to some of the other lower end graphics cards is it the best bang for buck or are you better off spending a little bit more on your graphics card let's talk looking for a cheap way to license your windows check out who keys through the links in the video description make sure to use the code tn20 to get a 30 percent off paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done this license is for windows 10 but you can upgrade it to windows 11 for free they also offer microsoft office 19 license use the same code tn20 to get a 30 percent off check out whokeys.com in the video description below so then what's happening in this video is we're going to be looking at this asus rtx 3050 dual this is you know the graphics card i did the unboxing with if you haven't seen that video feel free to go check that out where we're going to look a bit more like this card specifically what does it feature you know and what's the temperatures like and so on so if you're interested in that just go check it out but the best way to review an rtx 3050 is really to like look at some other cards side by side now for the past few weeks i've been putting together a gpu test bench and testing these two cards side by side as well on this side we have an rtx 2060 super from gigabyte and then on the other side over here we have an rtx 3060 from zotac and this is the white one that we had in our you know 1500 dollar greater pc build so i pulled it out from there and then tested it on the gpu test bench by the way since making this 1500 dollar greater pc video the cards have actually come down in price so i'm gonna leave all of those linked below so the test bench then all of the gpus have been tested in the same test bench and these are the specs cpu is i7 12700 motherboard is asus b660 creator d4 we're using two times 32 gigabytes of kingston fury beast rgb 3600 megahertz cl18 ram for cooler we're using the deep cool castle 360 ex white cooler the case is deep cool ck 560 and white version as well for ssd we're using the samsung 980 pro one terabyte we're using windows 11 for this and the driver is a studio driver and 511.65 now on the screen you can see some specs between the three graphics cards this is just for your information and you can pause this for longer but one of the main things you want to see over here is the CUDA cores for example we can see that the 3060 has quite a bit more CUDA cores than the 2060 super and rtx 3050 also the memory bus is quite a bit different on all of these cards as well as the pcie generation the rtx 2060 super is gen 3 x16 whereas our 3050 is gen 4 x 8 slot and the 3060 is gen 4 x 16 slot as well now another very important factor for these gpus is the tdp 3050 over here is 130 watts 2060 super is 175 watt tdp and the 3060 is 170 watts as well the pricing at the moment depending when you're watching this video those prices change all the time but roughly at the moment while making this video i can see that the pricing is roughly that the 3050 you can get roughly around 480 dollars in the us and those prices are coming down daily which is good news the rtx 2060 super is roughly around 700 dollars or so it's hard to find that one new because it's a little bit of an older card so if you wanted to get that used it's a little bit less and so on and then the 3060 is the most expensive over here at around 780 dollars or so which is actually lower than what i have seen it recently so that's good news so let's have a look at the power draw before putting this actually into some of the real world benchmarks the power draw on the rtx 3050 is as stated 130 watts and the gpu temperature after 30 minutes when it's just equalized or just stays there it's roughly about 42.5 degrees over ambient now this metric is important if you're wondering how hot this gpu runs in your place or wherever you are located because just add that 30 minute temperature to your ambient temperature and then you get the gpu temperature this is just to test 
how good does the GPU measure or keep its own temperature within the case. All of these have been tested also with side panel open so we get as good airflow as possible so we're not restricted just by the case which means that you can use any of your cases you can roughly calculate or measure what the GPU temperature would be in your situation in your build. The RTX 2060 Super is the hottest in this bunch over here and we can see it at 60.9 degrees and then the RTX 3060 is 43.5 degrees. Now this is mostly due to the lower nanometer process on the 3050 and 3060 compared to the 2000 series RTX cards. Now some benchmarks then. We have first the Geekbench 5 GPU benchmarks, CUDA, OpenCL and Vulkan. By the way all of these percentages are compared to the RTX 2060 Super. RTX 3050 is roughly about 27.1% slower in the CUDA score, 21% slower on the OpenCL score and about 21% slower on the Vulkan score as well as the 2060 Super. So even though having more CUDA cores, the actual memory bus and the power limit is where we're actually seeing the dip in performance. Moving on to Blender and GPU rendering now. By the way, Blender just updated. So this is Blender 3.1. So I had to run all of my Blender benchmarks again. Quite annoying. The RTX 3050 is quite a bit slower now here than the 2060 Super. About 36% slower on the monster scene. 30% slower on the junk shop scene and about 37% slower on the classroom scene. But interestingly looking at the 3060, the 3060 isn't that much faster than the RTX 2060 Super. Now some actual real world application benchmarks like Photoshop. In here we can see that our 3050 is within 0.5% of RTX 2060 Super and this is where I'm trying to make my point with all of the photographers that having a very high-end graphics card for your photo editing doesn't really give you that big of a difference. So the 2060 Super, RTX 3050 and RTX 2060 and RTX 3060 are all within the margin of error of each other so they're performing very very similar. Now Lightroom Classic is even more the same. All of the graphics card that you have in Lightroom Classic don't matter in the performance difference. All of them perform the same. Moving on to video editing and Adobe Premiere Pro. The RTX 3050 is about 11 or 10.5% really slower than the RTX 2060 Super. But more interestingly, the RTX 3060 with much more VRAM is performing about the same as the RTX 2060 Super. Bear in mind our iGPU on the CPU has been turned off just to give those encoders on the graphics cards their time and you know let them actually perform and see, see how good those graphics cards are. Now if you look at the, the actual benchmark scores like in-depth and more like where is the difference then the GPU effects and effects score is where the RTX 3050 really lacks a little bit the most but then like about the export scores and live playback scores aren't as bad really especially standard export scores so for the money RTX 3050 really isn't as bad of a card in Premiere Pro. Moving on to After Effects in here the graphics card makes less of a difference our RTX 3050 is only 2% slower in overall score compared to the RTX 2060 Super and only 3% slower than the RTX 3060 as we have over here. As you can see the biggest difference is in the GPU performance where ours is about 24% slower than the RTX 2060 Super. But then as you can see our RTX 3060 isn't that much faster than the 2060 Super or 3050 so if After Effects is a massive part of your workflow then maybe worth saving on the graphics card budget and going with the RTX 3050 because they aren't that different between those two. Moving on to DaVinci Resolve and here we can see quite an interesting difference. The RTX 2060 Super is the fastest GPU out of those three over here and the 3050 is about 15 or a bit more percent slower than the 2060 Super. And our RTX 3060 now is actually slower than the 2060 Super which is very very interesting. Now it's only slightly slower but it's still within the 2% so it kind of counts as within the margin of error but looks like it's still slower but only slightly. 
in DaVinci Resolve, you can really see that the GPU or having a good GPU really affects the performance of everything because DaVinci Resolve likes to use GPU and really can utilize it in performance of your video editing. Lastly, moving on to V-Ray and here we can see that our RTX 3050 actually is 1.9% faster in the CUDA benchmark, which is very, very interesting. The RTX 3060 is about 61% faster than the 2060 Super in the CUDA score just because we have loads more CUDA cores so if that's important for you then the RTX 3060 has a, quite a big of a leap over the 3050. In terms of the RT cores performance and RTX performance which is ray tracing performance the 3050 is about 13% slower because the 2060 Super has much more RT cores. But now the RTX 3060 is about 43.8% faster than the 2060 Super. So in conclusion then, is the RTX 3050 worth buying or not? Is it a bit of a money grab from Nvidia or does it actually make sense to you as a creator? Now looking at the photo editing benchmarks, I think this is a perfect card for you and I've made a complete other build for this. In fact, this GPU test bench is actually the build that we did if you want to check it out it's uh, on the channel feel free to check it out it makes a lot of sense to get the 3050 because we have enough performance to do light 4k editing if you are a photographer but for your photo editing you know benchmark differences there isn't anything really massively different between this card over here and something more expensive like the rtx 3060 and even for video editing in premiere pro if you look at the price difference between the 2060 super or 3060 then the rtx 3050 makes a ton of sense and i would really actually label it as the best bang for buck GPU for creators because you get the most performance for your money if there was an actual metric between you know dollars per benchmark scores or performance per dollar then the 3050 is the best option because it starts to scale up very slowly but the price goes up very fast when moving on to like 3060 and so on. So if you're using Adobe products, then this makes a lot of sense. And if you're looking something on a budget and maybe perhaps your PC build budget is roughly around thousand dollars, then I think this 3050 makes a lot of sense. If you're on DaVinci Resolve though, then depending on your workflow and you know how much you're using the GPU effects and so on, maybe worth looking into a little bit of a better GPU because DaVinci Resolve can utilize this more. But if you're still on the budget, I think this is the best bank for buck card for creators. If you buy any of the ASUS cards, then ASUS GPUs offer one month for free Adobe Creative Cloud membership. So if you already have the Creative Cloud, then maybe worth checking out the ASUS cards because you get an extra month for free even if you're already using the Creative Cloud. So worth checking out. I'm gonna leave these GPUs in the description below as well as some of the other alternatives or some of the cheapest versions that I can find when publishing this video. So if you wanna check out some of the pricing or cheapest GPUs, 3050 or 3060, then I'm gonna leave those in the description below. As always, thanks guys for watching. If you want me to include any of the other benchmarks in the future videos or compare certain GPUs to certain GPUs, then let me know that in the comment section below. I'll meet you there. Likes if you enjoyed it, subs if you'd like to see more, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.